Hello there and welcome to Core Finance, sponsored by Beaufort Securities, where we're joined by Ronnie Chopra, as Chief Market Strategist at TJM Partners. How are you today, Ronnie? Fantastic, Zach. Always and good to see you. It's very good to see you. I wanted to mention your Twitter feed, which you do day and night, in fact. Uh, two o'clock in the morning, there's a ping on my phone, and it's you, at Ronnie Chopra one It's a very famous handle, almost as famous as... Um, Donald J. Trump, I would say. Well, well, we do at the same time. Exactly, yes, and the same sort of content too. Uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the highlights of the day. So far, we've got the UK economy growing by 0.3% in the latest pre preliminary GDP number. Um, what's the betting on that going to a negative uh, figure over the next six months? Well, I don't yeah. think so, because this is slightly better than what the market was expecting as well. They're expecting 0.2%. Uh, manufacturing data out yesterday was very good the best since the 1990s, so... Um, I was disappointed by that, because it means that Theresa May will cling on a bit longer. Well, no, I hope not. <laughs> OK, let's go on to uh, the FTSE stock of the day. Um, ITV, where uh, everyone and their mother has a chance to talk about Love Island, or at least think about it. Uh, any views on uh, ITV apart from that? Well, the results were slightly better than expected. The shares are up a couple of percent, I think, the last time I looked. But these, again, these are a perennial bid target. The, the likes of... Uh, Liberty Global, they've been touted as a possible predator, and uh, you know he's just uh, Maloney said that the, the shares are a little bit high, but if there's going to be a a, a bid premium, then uh, we're talking in excess of 250 a share. Yeah, but the problem is ITV don't seem to be aware that uh, they're a bid target, and they seem to be going on in a rather sleepy. A sleeping giant fashion. They raise a dividend a little bit just to try and butter people up, but uh, they don't realise that they're, they're sort of you know ten years out of date. Yes, but then that's dangerous because then someone's going to pick them up. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Uh, next up, uh, we've got an AIM stock which actually, according to my records, pays a 7% dividend. Central Asia Metals, uh, copper and diamond miner, uh, obviously flush with cash, uh, which well, is unusual. Copper is at a two-year high. It's been surging for the last few weeks, hasn't it? Relentless rally in uh, some of the mining companies. Yeah, so that's one of the smaller success, success stories. Uh, Moving along to the, um, the pound, which uh, slight well, just holding above one dollar thirty, and uh, backed off a bit on the euro euro sterling yeah. from uh, the eighty nine fifty area. So not. Uh, well, I mean, like the the pound against the euro, it's come off considerably, hasn't it, in the last few weeks? Yeah. Pretty much almost parity, or one ten, one eleven. Well, parity at the airport. Parity in the airport. Well, I think you need to give more pounds at the airport to get a euro. Well, it's worth it, isn't it, for Mr. Draghi? Uh, we'll go on to. Um, Broker recommendations where we see Credit Suisse uh, getting their, uh, well, it's a bit of red face here, a red face situation, I would say, with the Acacia Mining. Apparently, they've been fined by the Tanzanian government. Uh, uh, they've got to pay like a billion dollars a year for the next 180 years, uh, which, is, which is, you know, which is not great for business, I presume. Yeah, that's, uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, showing people how, uh, what a wonderful place uh, Africa is to do business in the 21st century, at least in some places. Well, the Chinese probably uh, disagree with you. Yeah. They, they control Africa now. All right, so maybe they've, uh, maybe, well, I wouldn't Maybe make they control the Tanzanian government. government. It could be that. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Uh, let's move along to um, the core number, which is 2040, uh, that, which is the age of, I'll be 74 then, which is really? hopefully not, the, um, not my final year. But uh, in fact, uh, that is the year when we are promised there will be no more petrol or um, diesel cars. We're around. copying the French. Yes, the French leading the world in that area. No, the Norwegians, 2025 is when they want to get rid of uh, petrol and diesel cars. Good luck with that, I would say. I mean, the Saudis, well, I'm not sure when they, want to, when they want that to happen. Well, 2140 probably. Okay, let's go on to uh, the uh, calendar, uh, which is a, it's a big day. Uh, new home sales at 3 o'clock, uh, EIA oil stocks change. Yeah, oil's had a remarkable rally, hasn't it? Yesterday was up 3%, largest rise in 2017. Yeah. Um, Saudi's managed to get um, the production cuts over the line. Uh, nothing to do with Aramco, obviously. No, no, of course not. Aramco. What's Aramco? Never heard of it. Um, and uh, then we've got, uh, 7 o'clock, the, the highlight of the day, Fed interest rate decision. Are you expecting anything uh, profound there, Ronnie? Well, the markets don't seem to think there's going to be any change, but do you think that Mrs. Yellen is, is one to surprise the markets? I don't, I don't think so. Well, I mean, probably they've done enough for, for the meantime, but we'll, we'll Although, see how it goes. you know, the markets are, to use Alan Greenspan's phrase, over-exuberant, overconfident, and don't get too complacent. 
Um, I don't think there's any chance of that uh, here at Core Finance. But let's have a look at some of the uh, stocks you wanted to talk about. Um, starting off with uh, Barclays, where there's so, been, um, uh, I suppose, a pullback from uh, the beginning of the year. But it uh, looks like the shares want to rebound at the moment. Yeah, there are a few companies in the FTSE 100. Like I wrote an article a few days ago with these uh, high-yielding dividend shares that are possible bid targets. And Barclays was, was a target in 2005 from the likes of uh, Bank of America and Citigroup. And uh, with the shares a third of where they were back in 2005, 2006, it's surprising that uh, no one has kind of pounced on them. But there are rumors in the market that, uh, yeah, they would make a, an attractive target. They, they picked up Lehman Brothers for next to nothing in 2008 at the... Uh, Nadia of the uh, banking crisis, and uh, with the shares languishing just above two pounds ahead of results tomorrow, you know, there's the, there's no smoke without fire. Could it be? I mean, a little bit, little bit less exciting that they just uh, you just demerged the uh, the investment bank side uh, with the, uh, from the, um, the, the the retail side. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously there'll be activists looking at Barclays closely, and uh, you know, demerge uh, some of parts of Barclays as well in excess of two pounds a share. Right. So. Yeah, so it's, uh, move along swiftly to Lon Min, if we can get that. Uh, what's your view of this? Because obviously it's well, a bit of a this, South Africa play, isn't it? Well, it is. Obviously, it's a, an African play, but they had very good production figures last week. And these shares were bid for by Extrata, which is now part of Glencore back in, uh, I think it was 2007 or eight. Uh, 33 pounds a share. Today, they're languishing below a pound. And uh, obviously, they are a major platinum play, but... So they, do they dodged a bullet there, I would say. Well, the, the thing is that they've, they've cut costs considerably, and production figures last week were much better than expected. So with the share so low at the moment, and with mining companies doing a lot better than they have been in the, in the last couple of years, um, these, are, these come into play again. You know, even if there's a 100% premium on this, a, a pound 60, two pounds a share, it's a lot better now at two pounds well, 85p than uh, when they were 33p, 33 pounds. Okay, well, let's have a look at Parkston's. Um, every day I always see their office in Park Lane, which looks like a palace, um, on the way to uh, here uh, to Core Finance. Yeah, it they, they have of, uh, the state of the London uh, housing market. They uh, they have results out, I think, tomorrow. So this is another one that's come down from about four pounds a share, and obviously with the housing market in London in pretty dire straits at the moment. Um, the shares are at multi-year lows. But having said that, people still have to rent. There's the sales market is obviously in a bad way, but with the weak pound, you've still got a lot of overseas interest from the likes of the Middle East and uh, India, the States. Um, and, and if the pound continues to stay at these levels, then uh, you know, the, the housing market in London will probably pick up. Okay, just a quick look at uh, Sainsbury's. Just want to uh, one word or two words on that. Well, again, this was bid for at six pounds a share by the Qataris back in two thousand and five, was it? And what today they're languishing around two forty five a share, less than half of the level of two thousand and five, two thousand and six. Time to average down, I would say. Well, yeah. Okay, and then finally, uh, Vodafone, which uh, had its uh, uh, figures uh, the other day. Which were slightly better than expected. Uh, another one that Liberty, Global Liberty Media, are, uh, have been touted as possible predators, and with the streamlined version of, of Vodafone, they've got interests in the same places as, as uh, Global Liberty Media, then uh, again, these make an attractive target for, for the huge American company. And thank you to Ronnie Chopra, Chief Market Strategist at TJM Partners. Thanks for coming in today. Pleasure. That's it for the Core Finance Show, sponsored by Beaufort Securities.